So guys, I've got something to share with you. You ready for this? He's done! My giraffe from World of Warcraft. He's finally finished. Wanna see how I made it? Of course you do. If you haven't already, check out my playlist of more detailed instructions for my other steps. But let's have a look. From starting out, how I made his wire armature, basing the, the frame of him on a picture I found on the internet of some fan art of World of Warcraft giraffes. Then I was able to get rough dimensions. If I hadn't been able to find that picture, I would have just used regular giraffes, possibly even found anatomy pictures for them winding into shapes using a version of my large armature for needle felted sculptures obviously the neck's a bit longer but mainly all mammals are pretty much similar we're built on the same kind of design so that's how we made that always when you're using a wire armature make sure and fold in or otherwise make sure that the ends of the wire are not going to be jabby and poking out either by folding or wrapping with some floristry tape or something to protect the ends. Once the armature is made it's then winding on some fleece. I use the carded bats of carded white corridor from World of Wool, taking this into manageable size strips and covering the entirety of the wool. I don't find that I need to add any tacky or sticky stuff to get this to stick. It just holds its own if you wind nice and tightly and hold on and then once you when you start stabbing it it forms a complete tube round that that holds nicely in place making sure for the giraffe not to go overboard with the with the legs keeping them nice and thin then building up muscles and more detail on the type of his body once I'm happy with the shape of his body adding on the tail and then starting to colour him with a lovely tan colour making sure to leave the bottoms of his legs white building up his hooves using black fleece bearing in mind this is a cloven footed beast so felting down the middle to make it into two toes. Of course I was completely procrastinating with the head, I was a bit nervous of making that. And because it is a fantasy type creature rather than based on reality, then I made the head not quite as... Mm, not quite as giraffe-like and with the horns and everything it looks, looks a little more like maybe a gazelle or something. But I think that works really well to have that mythological aspect. His horns were made with two short pieces of pipe cleaner and then wrapped in black, the same as his hooves. And these are attached to the top of his head with a little bit of the tan to give an indication that they're growing out of skin and not just stuck on his head. And then this week was his spots and his hair, the final stages. So using the diagram as a guide for figuring out the kind of spots, the trick with this was to think of mixing in some small spots with some big spots. And it seems almost with the pattern of the giraffe, it's almost the, the negative space that you're thinking about how that flows almost in lines rather than thinking about just putting random spots in. I'm going to sound crazy but while I was doing this I thought something along the lines of people doing dry stone dikes or something where you have to pick the right sized stones to put into the spaces that appear. I felt that very much. I was trying to think of random shapes but at the same time figuring out what random shape would fit in each space. And again, down the bottom of his legs and up his neck and onto his cheeks, the spots were getting much smaller. Now, when you're needle felting spots onto an animal, it is important to make sure that the base is fairly firm to start with, because you're going to be felting a fair, fair amount in that area, so you can deform the shape if it's not firm. But also, when you're moving onto really small spots, what can happen is your spot can disappear into the animal pretty much. It will felt right into the animal if it's not firmly felted and you're not careful with the angle that you put your needle in with. So don't just harshly jab in, just be a bit careful with this. Equally on the legs you'll want to be careful not to go all the way through because that will produce a tiny little fleck of the brown colour sticking out through the white of the leg and we don't want that. Once all the spots are in place, I spent several hours just going over, felting everything up, making sure the spots were nice and smooth. And also, you've got to be careful to make sure that there's not too much stray dark brown hairs going into the tan. You want some nice crisp edges between the spots and the skin. And then we're moving on to his hairiness. Again, this is just based on the drawings that I'd seen. So looking at this 
this mythical giraffe, the hair seems quite tufty so I decided rather than putting on one solid long mane I would put on little tufts um, by taking a piece twice the length I want, felting just a little bit into the centre and then folding that over, felting it so it kind of stuck up a bit and then once all the pieces were on, grooming it into place by gently felting down in the direction I wanted it to go while still leaving a bit of scruffy zaniness left behind and exactly the same on the tail and in the diagram he has these tufts on his armpits which seemed weird uh, but I stuck them in they're fine you don't notice them that much and I tried the tufts as feathering around his legs but to be honest I just wasn't pleased with the effect I much prefer his his clean legs so we removed them last final felt all over him and that's my World of Warcraft giraffe complete. I hope you enjoyed watching him and if you have made anything like this following along from me please feel free to share I love to see your work come along and join in on Pam Duthie's felting friends to share anything everything's really everyone's really helpful and supportive there please remember I'm Pam Duthie I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration every Thursday I make videos like these every Wednesday I make needle felting supply equipment and technique videos and every Monday I make videos on tips for selling art and craft online. So if this is something you're interested in don't forget click my wee face to subscribe, check out some of the videos that YouTube thinks you want to watch and come back every Thursday. See you next week.